Well, thank you, Captain. Hello and hello again, and welcome to the Living Strong TV.com radio broadcast, where I'm your host, hey, Prophet Johnson. You know what to do right quick? Call that friend. Call that neighbor and let them know right quick. Tune in. Name it 4.7 FM WAAW. Right now, we're in that fastest 30 minutes where I'm your host again, Prophet Johnson. It starts right now. Now, what we're going to do on this week, we're going to change up just a little bit. We're going to change up because Father been dealing with me about something. And he's been dealing with me about the year that we have entered into the year of 2020. And so now what we are experiencing is an outpouring of revelation knowledge like never before. There's a transitioning hour in which we are experiencing at this moment. And this transitioning hour is far more serious than what mankind realize. This is not anything to be taken lightly or to be just toyed with in this day and time. Now, Many of you, you have a lot, perhaps, like me, just been, you know, basically allowing life to be life and to love God. But have you ever heard an old saying that well, there's more to life than just this? Or there's more to life than just that. People always say there's more to life than just something else. You know. And so what I want to do is kind of tone it down a little bit if I can. It kind of pulled back the reins a little bit. Uh, we just dealt with the truth at war. Uh, many of the um, living strong viewers have dealt with uh, truth on trial. The death of truth, the resurrection of truth. But now, the Father spoke something to me and said, What I want you to do is that I want you to deal with something that's going to bless the people coming into the new year, coming into the season. He said, I want an awakening message. That's going to prepare my people once again to believe my word like never before. Now, what I'm about to share with you uh, this evening is a message that many of you are basically familiar with the topic. You all know it, basically the majority of you by heart. Well, what is it, Prophet Johnson? Faith? Well, now, that's a good one, don't you think? Well, yeah, here we go again, see? Faith. But you say, well, Prophet Johnson, that's just something we, we know that we just got to have and we live by, and it's something we do every day, and it's, it's old school teaching, and, and they teach it all on television, and, and the world teaches it and everybody, and we know we got to have faith to do this or to do that. Yes, sir, that's good. That's good. I am so glad that at least now, perhaps, we get to go back to elementary school just a little bit and learn a little bit more of the ABCs of faith. Okay, here it goes. And you know this, the majority of us know this, so if, if you feel like you're going to be bored, I want you to hold on just a minute because we want to start out on a lighter note. You know, there's been a whole lot up in the air, a whole lot of star-spangled banners, a whole lot of falling out, you know, the Super Bowl game and 
all the stuff that is going on in the world and you, you need a relief. You need a relief. And you need a, a rescue from the surrounding functions of life that brings forth the disidentations and all of the confusions and breakdowns like never before. So you got to have something to pick you back up and say, well, Prophet Johnson, here we go again. Let's get it on. All right. Faith is part of it, but I want to talk about something else too. I want to talk about fire. That's right, fire. No, not the fire that the caveman have to invent when the lightning struck a tree. You know, they was bewildered, as, as the old saying goes. You know, the caveman looking around, lightning struck a tree. Or, or the caveman had invented the stone, you know. It finally invented the wheel. They show it on TV, rolling the wheel down the cave or road cave or whatever. Here's the thing. All that's good for him. But what we want to do is look at God's word. The Bible declares that our God is a consuming fire. Not only that, but it says that his ministers shall be ministers of fire, a flaming fire. What is it about fire that's mixed with God and what is it about fire when you mix it with faith? <clears throat> well, now, Prophet Johnson, where are you going? Well, I don't know just yet. I haven't left yet, but we'll get there. There's something about faith, and there's something about fire when it comes together. Now, let's deal with a little bit of basics. Hebrews chapter number 11. Captain, I got to wake up and see if we can get going here. Verse number one. And you know it by heart. Now faith is. Now faith is. If faith is, that means that the manifestation of faith is already in existence. So if the manifestation of faith now, at this moment, you don't have to wait on it. It's your turn now. Uh, excuse me, now. Faith is. Faith isn't absent. Faith is right here. So what is Piastus talking about? Pistus, faith. What is it talking about? Faith is now the substance. Hallelujah. Of things hoped for. So there's something that's happening in this world. Things, T-H-I-N-G-S. Gifts, gadgets, trinkets. Things in life. Here goes. The evident of things not seen. Faith is the substance of things hoped for. Things that we're hoping for. A new car. A new house. Faith. Okay. The evidence. Again. So now faith becomes that evident, but folks don't explain this a million times all over the world. You got faith healers, you got faith teachers, you got faith preachers, you got faith warriors, you got faith prayers, you got faith everything, everywhere. So you're not missing anything too much then, are you? Except one thing, what's that Prophet Johnson? Faith on fire. That's right. No, 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 no. You see, I'm not talking about an average faith. God spoke something to me. And he said, tell them that my glory, hallelujah, is coming back to the church. Tell them that Jesus said concerning the centurion soldier, I have not seen so great a faith, no, not in all of Israel. So now we're getting ready to see where faith has got to come in and faith has got to return. No, not just any old faith because folks are not living bad no more. 
People are living by money, not by faith. People are living by nine to five, not by faith. People are living by a word spoken through television or some internet or some stargazer or some necromancer, but not by faith. No, not everybody. I'm not talking to you. I'm talking to the ones that it pertains to. Do you hear me? Because faith is the substance. So now we're looking for a substance of things hoped for, knowing that the evidence of it soon shall be seen. Okay? Now, I'm not going to read all of it because by it, the elders did obtain a good report. Now, there's something about faith once it begins to be activated in the lives of the individual. But I don't want to talk about any average faith. I want to talk about a personal faith, a different type of faith, something that's on the inside of you that God is about to unlock. I told you I want to keep this simple. I want to keep it simple. That God want to unlock and release like never before. Acts chapter number 3. And in verse number um, 11. Acts 3 and 11. And as the lame man which was healed held Peter and John, all the people ran together unto them in the porch that is called Solomon's greatly wondering. Your silver and gold have I not, but what I have give I unto thee. Rise, walk in the name of Jesus, okay? That's Peter and John when they're entering into the place of the gate they call beautiful, all right? Solomon's porch. Verse number 12, and when Peter saw it, he answered unto the people, you men of Israel, why marvel you at this? Or why you look so earnestly on us? Why are you looking at us? As though by our own power or holiness. By our own power or holiness. Did you hear that? <coughs> That's the problem with a whole lot of folks. They think that it's by their power or their good looks. That's not where it's coming from. That's not where it's, where it's going to be you know, introduced. Okay? He's saying, no, it's not by us. All right. We had uh, uh, by our power of holiness that we had made this man to walk. Now watch what verse number 13 declares. Acts chapter number three. The God of Abraham and of Isaac and of Jacob, the God of our fathers, hath glorified his son Jesus. Watch this. Whom you delivered up. You delivered the word up. You put truth on trial. Truth was at war. Truth was denied. But now truth was resurrected. Now faith is on fire coming from the truth that died for the world and died, hallelujah, for the sins of the nation. And now what God is saying, I'm bringing something back. I want it in your life because I'm about to move like never before. Look at this. You delivered him up and denied him in the presence of Pilate when he was determined to let him go. He wouldn't let him go, but no, you church folks, you killed him. Here it is. But you denied the Holy One and the just and desired a murderer. This is truth on trial, faith on fire. Here it is to be granted unto you. You denied, you denied the true and living God, but you wanted the murderer, you wanted the adulterer, you wanted the thief. So now what's happening? Jesus said, okay, I'll die for him too, as well as you. But what I'm about to do is flip the script. It is. It is. Verse number 15, and killed. The prince of life, the prince of life, whom God hath raised from the dead, whereof we are witnesses. You and I, you better believe it. And his name, through faith, that is, Captain, faith, hallelujah, 
is now resurrected. Faith is now about to be on fire. Faith, hallelujah, is about to enter on the scene. In his name, through faith. Uh, his, in, in, I got to read it right. I'm getting happy. As y'all can see, Captain, I got to loosen up after I'm waking up here. In his name, through faith, in his name, have made this man strong, whom you see and know. Yea, the faith which is by him hath given him this perfect soundness in the presence of you all. And now, brethren, I would not that you through ignorance, you did it as did also your rulers. But those things which God before had showed by the mouth of all his prophets that Christ should suffer and have so fulfilled. Repent. Hallelujah. You therefore and be converted that your sins may be blotted out when the times of refreshing shall come from the presence of the Lord. And he shall send Jesus Christ, which before was preached unto you. You've heard the old story. Many of you. It goes back about 40 some years, 50 years. And I want to give you an up to date version of it if I may. The story goes like this. There was two brothers. One was an older brother and one was a younger brother. No, I'm not talking about the prodigal son. That's me. But here's the deal. The younger brother, he liked to go out and hot rod it. He liked to go out and kick it with the boys and kick the willy bobo and, and chases all the girls. He was a gambler, a street hawker, a rider. Oh, but he had a good little heart. The older brother stayed home. Watch the house. No, I'm not talking about the prodigal son. Get that out of your mind. He stayed home and made sure everything was in order. And in doing so, he just basically read the word of God, kept the house clean, made sure everything was okay while he watched a little TV and ate a little popcorn, you know, like you. Here's the thing. The story goes, the younger brother went out one night. He went around into the street corners and I'd like to say the projects of Mississippi where I'm from, East View. And he got into one of the little hallways there and there was a gang of guys gambling and they was rolling dice. You know what dice is? They call them craps. Be careful because craps will get you into some trouble. They're rolling dice. You know, crafts got snake eyes and 7-Eleven and, and all them and, uh, and eights and stuff. And I, I, uh, crafts is they're rolling dice. We know about it. Uh, so while they're rolling the dice, the guys are gathering around. But here's the problem. The younger boy was taking the dice. And he had a loaded pair of dice. You ever heard a loaded pair of dice? The gamblers know it's called a it stacked. It was loaded with a little, um, uh, uh, what, what do they call it, uh, metal in it, <laughs> you know, little north and south magnets. So while he was rolling the loaded dice, all the other guys had their money on the line. The younger brother had won. So much of the money. And they was all looking at him wondering how he was winning and why he was so lucky. And one of the guys looked at him as they placed that last little bet down. He said, I'm betting everything I got. He said, you ain't going to win this time one way or another. 
younger brother and all the others throw that money in the pot hallelujah who gonna win this lottery ticket and while the younger brother got the dices and got ready to roll them again he took him and shook him and clank, 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 clank. And then he rolled them out, but the boy stopped them. And he picked the dice up. And he looked at the dice. And he started shaking them. And as he started shaking them, he said, these dice are loaded. He rolled the dice out and both of the numbers fell on seven. He rolled them out again and they fell on 11. He said, they're loaded. You're a cheat. They pulled out the gun. And as they pulled out the gun, they shot the younger brother. And when they shot the younger brother, they shot him and blood splattered everywhere. The younger brother ran, hallelujah, to his house. And as he ran up the stairs, and as he bumped through, hallelujah, with blood all on him, Something happened. Something happened. The younger brother didn't die. But before he left the scene, the younger brother had pulled out a gun also and shot and killed two of the other fellows as he ran with blood on him. He was shot. But he killed two others. And he ran home with blood and money all in his pocket. He ran home. And his older brother, as he beat the door, opened the door. And when he opened the door, the younger brother fell in. And he thought he was half dead, but come to find out that they just nicked him on the shoulder. But two other men lay dead. Hallelujah in the streets. And the next thing you know, the police is coming and sirens are everywhere. And the older brother said to the younger brother, take your clothes off and get in the shower. The younger brother took his clothes off and got in the shower. And the older brother grabbed his clothes and put his clothes on. And the police came beating down the door. And as they beat down the door, they opened the door and busted it open. And the older brother had the clothes on. And they grabbed the older brother and they took him to jail. And they say, we got you for murder. And when they took him to jail, they throw him in jail. And then they took him before the judge and they took him before the court system. And they said, you are a murderer, you are a gambler, you are a thief, you are a liar. And they stood him up before the judge. And the judge looked at him and said, how could you kill those boys when y'all was gambling equally together? And at that time, the younger brother had walked into the courtroom. He had on new clothes. The bloody clothes was gone. He had on clean clothes now. And when he walked into the courtroom, the judge was sentencing the older brother and said unto the older brother, you are sentenced to life in death imprisonment and you will never escape. And the younger brother began to run to the older brother with tears in his eyes. And they lay down the verdict. He's guilty. And they laid the verdict down. And the younger brother ran to the altar. He ran to the podium. And he told the judge, judge, no, no. My brother didn't do it. I did it. I'm the one that was in the streets. I'm the gambler. I'm the murderer. I killed him. I've got the evidence. The judge looked at the younger brother and said, it's too late. 
He said it's too late. The price has already been paid. You say, Prophet Johnson, what does it mean? You and I, we are the younger brother. You and I are guilty. And Jesus Christ is the older brother. He took our place. Truth was on trial. Faith is on fire. And he went to the cross. He went to the court system. And he died for you and I. That we might have the right to the tree of life. And we take it for granted. And we overlook the burdens of it all. The challenges of it all. And it was you and I that should have received the death sentence when he died for us. So again, truth on trial or faith on fire, which is it and which will it be? You say, well, Prophet Johnson, I don't know. Well, I tell you, I don't know either. All I can tell you is that God, as the old saying goes, is good. And all the time, God is good. I'm going to stop right there. My time is running out. I know you always say, Prophet Johnson, you always have a few minutes extra. Captain be rushing me and the whole crew sometimes, and I don't know. But I want to say this right quick in closing. In closing, while my heart is heavy, will you repeat after me and say, Father, forgive me. I'm a sinner. And I receive Jesus Christ as my Lord and my Savior, and I thank you in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. It's that simple. Captain, I'm going to close. Y'all hold on. Bear with me. I want to read one more scripture. Matthew 3 and 11. I indeed baptize you with water unto repentance, but he that cometh after me is mightier than I, Whose shoes I am not worthy to bear. He shall baptize you with the Holy Ghost and with fire. My brothers and sisters, that fastest 30 minutes has already come and gone your way. But don't forget to download the Living Strong app off of your Google Play Store, 190 plus countries and counting. Well, I'm your host, Prophet Johnson. Be a blessing to Living Strong at P.O. Box 363, Ridgeland, South Carolina, 29936. And once again, know the value of your life. He died for you and I. This is Faith on Fire. That's going to be my time. I'd like to thank you for yours. Always remember in life, Whatever you do, when you meet someone, you love, I love, and together, we love. I know I didn't get to the message like I wanted to, but you get ready because your faith is going to get caught on fire. We'll see you next time. Have a good night. Bye. Bye.